Hello, hello! One of the cool things about working remote is I could come out here in my garage and make a video whenever I want to. And today, this video will cover Tygo's string sizing tool. Now, the purpose of a string sizing tool is to allow you to correctly count the number of modules per string and how many strings of modules you will need to go into the Tygo inverter. Hi, please allow me to interrupt Greg for just a minute with some important amplifying information about Tygo's string sizing tool. There are four main checkpoints for the string sizing tool. First, it ensures the correct number of modules in each string. This equates to a specific open circuit voltage that I will elaborate on shortly. Next, it ensures the correct number of strings for the inverter. The tool shows specific stringing information for all three of the Tygo EI inverters. The tool also ensures the open circuit voltage does not exceed 550 volts. Although the Tygo EI inverters can be used in 600 volt residential systems, there is a safety window of 50 volts on the upper end. Once in operation, if the inverter detects a string voltage of 550 volts, the inverter will stop producing. It will stay in a standby state until the open circuit voltage is below 550, and then it will resume normal operation. Lastly, the tool ensures the inverter will reach its PV start voltage of 80 volts. This is important for lower wattage modules used in shorter strings. We want to make sure each string will hit the minimum 80 volts so that the inverter can start producing and charge the batteries, if applicable. To get started, the first thing you will need is the module spec sheet or data sheet, whatever you want to call it. You can grab them online, you can find them everywhere. And I will be using a Jinko uh, module here. We look down and I'm going to use this 380 watt module right here. So let's make this a little bit bigger. And this is what we're looking for. When you go down to the electrical characteristics, which is common for all of these module spec sheets, there are a few things on here that we want to grab to put into our sizing tool. And let's take a look at the sizing tool right here. I've already pre-populated the information that we need. So the only thing that you have to do is enter in information in the entry fields that look like this. This kind of yellowish color right here. That's the only thing you need to do. But we do need these things over here. Okay, so we need open circuit voltage, maximum power voltage, and you can read the rest there. And all of those things are found on the module spec sheet. And all you have to do is go over, hunt and peck, and fill them in. Okay, and right here, this is all the information that we needed. And we did need a few other things that were found. So the temperature coefficients are right here. So when you go to the temperature characteristics section, you will find all of those. And the, the temperature coefficients of either max power or open circuit voltage, they're always negative. Okay, They're always negative because they have an inverse relationship to temperature. In other words, as temperature goes up, uh, Pmax and VOC go down. That's why they're negative. And they must be entered as a negative number here. So we have this little thing over here that says never less than 1% and it has to be negative. So. I've added all the module specs there. We're going to go down to the location temperature. And you'll see we have a link that goes to uh, an FSEC site where we're going to grab this information. Uh, the code allows us to do this. What some people want to do still is put in the record high and the record low temperatures for a specific area. And that usually results in a design that is way too restrictive. Okay, so even the National Electric Code 690 says you can use ASHRAE data. So what we will do is click on that. We are taken to the Florida's Energy Research Center. And you will start right here, uh, right over here on the very tip of Florida. And so what you'll need to do is zoom in or out to your area. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now, what you'll have to do, they used to have a zip code entry here, and it would bring you to the nearest airport location. They don't have that anymore. They are looking to bring it back. They just have to talk to ASHRAE uh, about it. 
So let's just, so you don't have to watch me click around, we're just going to pick this area right here, okay, Tallahassee. And there's the regional airport data. And what we will use are two specific things on this pop-up. We will use, for the high temperature, we will use the 2% average, which is 35C. And all the way over on the right, we will use the extreme minimum. And both of these values are way off from the record high and record low. Okay, just going to tell you. So we're going to use 35 and minus 8C. And you can pick whichever you want to use, but since those values are in Celsius, we're just going to use them here. All right, so 35 minus 8. Let's put them in here. Minus 8. 35 didn't change too much. Yeah. And then the next thing we will do is decide, and there's a little drop down menu here, which mounting method we will use because the closer the modules are to the rooftop, the less airflow they get, and so they tend to run hotter than a system on a ground mount. It's all about air circulation. Yeah. So we're going to leave it at rooftop. Then the next thing we will do is go to system size, and there's two things. It's either, okay, how, how many modules do you want, or how many modules do you already have on an existing array? Now, if you don't like that method, you just click over here and you can pick the size, right? So if you know you will be using a 7.6 kilowatt inverter and you just love the 1.2 to 1 uh, DC to AC ratio, so you already have that number in mind, then you can enter that here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the way the results are displayed. But I know a lot of people like using module quantity. So, all right, that's fine. Let's use... 24 of these modules and you can see that we already have some information populated so this is how we will uh, kind of evaluate the module selection all right so you can see uh, there is some data here it's giving us a system size here of 9.12 kilowatts using 24 of those modules and when we come over here, the screen lengths for the three Tayo inverters, they all start at four. And the 3.8, you can put nine of these things in a string for the 7.6 and the 11.4, you can put 12. And so that number is dictated by the upper end of the inverter. So all of our inverter specs are in here in the background. All right, so we're telling you and you, you can't go more than this because you're either going to go outside the operating limits of the inverter or you're going to go greater than 600 volts DC, which is not allowed by code. All right. So this kind of gives you an idea of, of your system size. Now, when you go here, the tool says, OK, well, that's a lot of modules for such a small inverter here, so I'm not even going to populate that. But if we look at the 7.6 kilowatt inverter, it says, oh, okay, you have 24 modules. Then we're going to do two strings of 12, and you are at a 1.23 DC to AC ratio. That's That was a pretty common uh, setup back in the day, right, for a 1.2. Uh, if we go down here to the 11.4, it says, okay, well, you can do that as well. Uh, you'll have two strings of 12 but you're at a 0.8 to one. So what that means is the array is undersized, relatively speaking, to the inverter nameplate value. And if we go back up here, we see that, again, the array size was 9.12. That is way less than the 11.4, so that's why we have a smaller percentage, okay? And so now if you put more modules on there, then the tool is smart enough to know, oh, okay, well, you'll need two of these inverters, or you'll need three inverters. And since the inverters we have are so flexible, you can play with this and, and see what the consequence is to the system design. For example, not everybody's going to have even number of strings. That's okay. We don't care because we have so many MPPTs available that you can have these oddball size strings, right? So let's do this. Let's do 31 modules, right? Let's just see what happens, right? So notice 
that this didn't change down here. It didn't change. The tool is working. So let's go down here and see what we got. Okay, it says, okay, I like that for a 7.6 kilowatt inverter. We will have two strings of 10, one string 11. We are at basically a 1.6 DC to AC ratio. And we're getting up there. That's okay because our inverters are rated for a 200% ratio. You can double the PV size. We're not even close to that. If we go to the 11.4, it's still saying we're using one inverter. Two strings of 10, one string of 11. But we see that the ratio is smaller. So this array is about evenly sized to the output of the inverter. Okay, well, let's get crazy. Let's see what happens. Let's put 62 modules in there. You got this huge system that you want to put in. Notice string lengths didn't change. And the tool says, all right, man, you got a big old mamma jamma system. You're going to need two 7.6 kilowatt inverters. Yeah, and that's how the stringing laid out. Just like that. If you're using 11.4, there's how the stringing works out. That's it. So now you know, based on the number of modules, how many inverters you need, how many modules per string you'll have to string up, and how many strings are going into the EI inverter. Easy peasy, right? And that's it for string sizing. If you have any questions, please give us a call. We will be happy to help you. Thank you for watching.